only reason that we would be able to continue with sour crates is if consumers were kept in the dark about it. In other words, this was kept secret. This pig farm is truly horrific. It's like a living nightmare and these animals live here every day of their lives. It's disgusting and it needs to stop. Every minute they're in those crates, it's hell for them. They're not living, they're just basically just waiting to die. John Derrick had planned a two-night stay on top of this farm silo. We're calling for the government to bring about a complete phase-out of factory farming in New Zealand. A shocking new footage has emerged of pigs at the same Levin farm exposed by TVNZ Sunday programme more than a year ago. There's blood all over her ear, all over her body, all over the bars that are confining her and all over the sow next to her. In New Zealand, pork industry is absolutely committed to animal welfare. This is an interview, I guess, and I would love it if you'd answer my question. How many times do we have to come on the programme say exactly the same thing for no result? The real tragedy is that those pigs have been in those crates since my king sold them 15 months ago. They haven't come out. They suffered for every single day. By the 3rd of December 2015, the use of sour crates will not be uh, an option for the pork industry in New Zealand. A controversial plan to extend the zoo's elephant enclosure has been given a go ahead. Zoo so elephants have a range of health problems which aren't found in wild elephants, and the problems that Cashin had were quite typical of zoo elephants. Zoos are actually moving away from keeping elephants in, in zoo enclosures because it is not in their interest. Cancer Cray has been operating in seven or eight pubs around the North Island. Hunters pay to catch their own crayfish using a metal claw. Those crays are walking around, happy little chappies. Patrons and protesters sharing their thoughts about this, the Cancer Cray. These machines will catch the crayfish about 30 times by like handling them before they're finally dragged out of the machine. Mainstream New Zealand doesn't like to see animals being abused. And they aren't being abused, Mr. Creek. Are going they aren't the being abused. Are Here is the evidence. They, they were the forgotten victims of the Christchurch earthquake. But all that's changed with the setting up of Animal Aid, a group determined to look out for the animals of the devastated city. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people leaving animals behind, and we're going out and checking out the situation and leaving food for the animals if need be. This is factory farming on a massive scale. You can see tens of thousands of birds in this shed. Uh, the cages are stacked eight high, uh, and each of the cages has got five or six birds in it. And you can see they have no freedom of movement at all. It never ceases to amaze me every time I come onto a battery hen farm at the absolute cruelty that is involved in this industry. I just had to be a part of this to try and make people aware of how absolutely revolting this industry is. Carl Scott plans to spend the next month in a cage. It's his way of drawing attention to the plight of battery hens. I want people to think, what would it be like in a cage for my entire life? It's called an enriched colony. Like nest, perch, scratch. Just changing your name doesn't make it any less of a cage. Currently, um, battery hens have about this much space in a cage. With the new colony cages, wow we, they're going to have that much space. When Hope first arrived, we were pretty shocked at her condition. She had obviously been left without food or water for days. But the fact is, she is a permanent paraplegic. We will probably need to make the call to let her go. And that's a really hard decision the person who lets hope die.
fact is, and this is the way I look at it, uh, every improvement we make for animals is important to them. To me, animal rights is one animal at a time.